January and welcome to the Hindu newspaper analysis discussion. So guys, let's start with the video. In the today's video, we are going to discuss entire analysis of Hindu newspaper. We'll take articles, we'll see their background, we'll see as what can be way forward in the articles. And before starting, I would like to tell you that you can download the entire synoptic notes in PDF format from our Telegram channel. Link for Telegram channel is given in description box in YouTube. Or you can directly go to Telegram and can search there by typing Thinking Palette by Sahil. You will get the Telegram channel and the PDF of Synoptic Notes, Explainer Notes is available there. Now, before starting, uh, let's take overview of entire newspaper so that we can understand that which articles are actually important in the newspaper for our exam and what is the placement of all these articles. So here we have the Hindu newspaper. And the first article that we can see here is that center clears 19,000 crore green hydrogen mission. So very, very important article. We are going to see this entire article. Then guys, moving on in this particular direction, opposition to Karnataka's Mahadai river water project mounts in Goa. So basically guys, over the river, in river, or river this issue is going on. Then moving on, services PMI shows surge in December. December. So basically what is this PMI? PMI stands for Purchasing Managers Index. So basically in the Purchasing Manager Index, find the corporate leaders. They are asked that what they feel about the economic conditions, what perceptions they have. So we find this particular thing that PMI shows a kind of a surge in the December sector. Now I have told you many number of times that month to month data, every month's estimates, GDP, uh, every month's uh, GST collection data, every month's export import performance data, every month's or quarterly PMI data are not important. In the end, economic survey, when it will come, the yearly economic trends, economic indicators, we will see there. Okay. So you are not required to follow, uh, follow or track it every day. Then the city section, regional section, majorly political regional news are there so moving on in this particular direction guys so same same thing is continuing in this particular direction the political news etc has been there so you need need not to go in this particular direction then guys further moving on here there is an article tal kaveri is uh, is south india's uh, top star party destination so we'll see that what is the dark sky reserve and we'll see that how the dark sky res the dark sky first dark, dark sky reserve of ladakh we'll see all those things particularly with respect to the prelims examination then moving on in this particular direction guys so we directly reach to editorial section an open letter to the indian film industry Briefly, we'll see that what the article is talking about. We don't need to go too much in detail in this article because article is having a lot of political undertone. But we'll see briefly what message can be taken. Then, mix the signals. Manufacturing has gained momentum, but inflation is still a concern. So guys, the article is talking about the PMI's performance. Fine. On month on month, fine. The core sector growth improvement that has been there. Then further moving on the values of local self-governance. So guys, we are, we have marked the 30th year anniversary of the 73rd and 74th Constitutional Amendment Act. Fine. So on that particular thing, we will see that what has been the performance of the third tier institution. So we will take this entire article. The side article gaming and gambling. So this particular article guys is talking about the recent proposal to bring online gaming under the gambit of IT rules. Fine. So we are taking this article from past two days already. Fine. But we'll take uh, also this article. Don't worry. Muhammad Iqbal, a poet for all ages. Okay. Now guys, basically, as we talk about this particular article, what has happened? Okay. So basically, Bache ki dua. Okay. A child's prayer. Okay, a bache ki dua, child's prayer, it has been, now in this child prayer, there is a line, lap pe aati hai dua banke tamanna meri. Now guys, basically what has happened uh, in, uh, in certain of the institutions, this particular child prayer, school assembly, it was taken up. So, complaint has been filed, complaint has been filed that why such child prayer where the line lap pe du aati hai dua banke tamanna meri, why it is being sung. So that article is on that particular line. If you want, you can read it. But guys, in this particular direction, uh, for UPSC academic dimensions that we talk about, much substance is not there. But this particular thing shows that how there are more and more increasing instances of intolerance that has happened. So poet Iqbal's profile that he always stood, he, he, he was never more centering to its religion. Fine, all these things are provided here. Then further moving on. 
after that guys uh, context uh, contextualizing the rise in retail investment in the stock market okay so where the investments are going on that trend has been given in this particular article not important article for the exam point of view then coming to text and context jallikattu cultural practice or crime so already we have seen the jallikattu related issues in the previous class we'll see that what this particular article is talking about then why has a high powered high power ladakh committee been formed we'll take this particular article as what is the proposal then guys further moving on uh, text and the context reading newspaper effectively to prepare for the civil service exam if you want you can read the article but the article doesn't contains much of the current affairs related substance okay moving on then after that here we can see one article supreme court stays order allowing up local body polls without obc reservation so in past uh, uh, in just past 3 4 days we have discussed this particular issue multiple number of times but now we'll see that what's the supreme court response in this particular direction okay then moving on guys in this particular direction further political news regional news etc has been there no need to go in these particular articles at all now here on the page number 12 essay attack victims failed by a lack of cohesive law we'll see this particular article with respect to the women related issues fine law and order etc then further moving on in this particular direction guys we come to the world page fine mccarthy fails a new in bid for speaker uh, fine sunak vows to half inflation so basically guys the uh, basically political articles okay the articles pertaining to the internal the, the economic trends within the country such as the uk etc they are being talked about here not important article for our examination because i tell you in every class that just the evolutionary developments happening across the world in different different countries not important we need to read the articles where foreign policy dimension of india is there or impact on india because of some scheme by nation is there such developments are important so evolutionary trends and details are not that much important crc orders payment to coal power units for forced output so basically guys what happened around the month of april may this particular year you might have read this particular thing that there was a coal shortage that was going on because of that particular thing electricity outage power outage could have happened so therefore at that point of a time government forced certain coal certain electricity generators who were dependent on imported coal that you start your production and you generate electricity and you should provide that particular electricity at that point of a time these electricity generators have stopped the operation why because they were dependent on imported coal and the coal was very much expensive but they were forced okay now cerc that is a central electricity regulatory commission has ordered that they should be paid compensation okay they should be paid compensation no need to go too much in detail in this article nothing is more beyond that not very much important here there is one article india lags in at automation of industry despite processing tech prowess we'll see this particular article with respect to the examination so guys that is all about it okay i hope that you have understood it and then we have the sports page okay so this is overview of entire newspaper and now guys let's take all these particular articles one by one and one more thing i want to guys show you here okay Uh, just one more thing i want to show you here just if you wait okay now here silent valley bird species number goes up to 175 now you see this particular article the article looks very more, more important but 175 species number on of bird species are there a point you cannot remember 175 species of birds b questions on such line don't come if some flagship species is there in the news the status of that particular flagship species is important okay or such kind of a things are there but 175 birds are there in this sanctuary 200 birds are there in that sanctuary with respect to the exam fine the questions on such kind of a lines don't make much of a sense okay so that is something that i want to tell you because guys you need to learn the skill as how to understand that which articles are actually important okay where whether the implication will be there for the exam or not okay so this was just to tell you that thing however moving on and now guys let's discuss all the relevant articles one by one okay so in every class we start with the gs quotation and guys today we'll take the quotation from ban ki moon former united nations secretary general ban ki moon says achieving gender equality 
requires the engagement of women and men, girls and boys. It's everyone's responsibility. So when we talk about the gender equality, guys, understand this particular thing. Women have to assert themselves and men, they have to realize the inherent responsibility to give equal level playing field to the fellow women. So it is a shared responsibility. It is everyone's responsibility and everybody needs to come together to ensure the gender equality comes. Now, guys, when we talk about the gender equality, gender equality happens to be a sustainable developmental goal. At the same time, gender equality also happens to be a constitutional goal. Fine, even the right to equality envisages that the gender equality should be given. Now, this particular idea can be important for GS paper number two as well as GS paper number four, ethics. Now, moving on and let's take the first article. Let's take the first article. Now, the first article, guys, is about the green hydrogen mission that has been launched by the government. Center launches, center clears green hydrogen mission. Now, this particular article, this particular article will be important for GS paper number three. GS paper number three, environment and conservation. Okay. And secondly, this particular article will also be important for prelims examination, okay, there are certain concepts that we are going to see. So for prelims examination also, the article is going to be important. Now, let's discuss this particular article. But before going in this particular article, guys, I am going to give you some background information which will be very much important, okay. So, basically guys, understand this particular thing, that India has already taken INDC, intended nationally determined contribution in 2015 in Paris, okay? And as per the intended nationally determined contributions, India is going to adopt more and more renewable energies, okay? Recently, these INDCs got revised also. Recently, these INDCs got revised also. And as per the INDCs that we have on renewable energy adoption, understand this particular thing, 50% now, the updated INDC is this, 50% of energy requirement should come from renewable energy. Is it clear or not? At the same time, guys, last year in 2021, India in Conference of Parties 26 have also adopted Panch Amrit target. India had adopted Panch Amrit target. And under the Panch Amrit target, the one most important target was there that India will become carbon neutral by 2070. India will become carbon neutral by 2070. And if we want to reduce our carbon emissions, again, the renewable energy is needed. Again, the renewable energy is needed. Is it clear or not? So, renewable energies mention is th there in our INDC target. Okay, its mention is under the Panch Amrit when we talk about becoming carbon neutral. At the same time, guys, understand this particular thing that when we talk about the vehicular emission, they contribute a very big chunk under the overall carbon emission of India. And because of the vehicular emission, along with the carbon emission, it also leads to many other problems because the harmful fumes, harmful exhaust, harmful smoke that is released, it leads to uh, increase in PM 2.5, it leads to increase in PM 1 and many of the respiratory diseases are because of the harmful fumes that are released in the vehicles. Now, a sustainable source of energy, a sustainable fuel is needed to meet our energy requirements and a sustainable fuel is needed a lot for vehicles also. And in this particular direction, guys, the hydrogen becomes a promising fuel. Okay, hydrogen becomes a promising fuel. Now, let's understand little bit that how hydrogen can help in this particular direction. So, basically guys, if you see, just a minute, I'll zoom it out here, fine, okay, now, so basically guys, when we talk about the hydrogen, hydrogen can be used in fuel cell, can be used in fuel cell, and these fuel cells can generate electricity. So, first of all, understand what is a fuel cell. So basically guys, fuel cell is a kind of a device which, which focus, uh, which uses hydrogen and oxygen. So hydrogen is used, oxygen is used 
and by using the hydrogen and oxygen the chemical reaction the chemical reaction leads to generation of electricity is it clear or not what will happen hydrogen plus oxygen it will lead to this chemical reaction will lead to generation of electricity and resultant uh, 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 resultant thing will just be the vapor steam okay so basically guys what can be done in the today when we talk about the modern cars the modern cars can work on this hydrogen fuel cell in this hydrogen fuel cell hydrogen will be used which will this fuel cell will convert that hydrogen not oxygen chemical reaction in electricity and that electricity will power the vehicle there are also the stationary fuel cells these stationary fuel cells are the very big equipments which can generate electricity by mixing hydrogen and oxygen and they can be used to provide power to airports railway stations bus stops many other big public buildings so in the past a lot of development has happened in in making this hydrogen fuel cell technology more and more efficient these fuel cells can drive cars buildings anything but point is that how we get the hydrogen so basically guys to get the hydrogen a process of electrolysis is to be carried what is electrolysis electrolysis means that electricity will be used to split water in hydrogen and oxygen and the hydrogen will then be trapped and that particular hydrogen can be used for energy is it clear or not so basically how to derive the hydrogen i told you that the hydrogen can be derived by carrying the electrolysis which is the process where electricity is used to split water in hydrogen and oxygen okay we can derive the hydrogen and then hydrogen can be used in fuel cell to generate power but what is this green hydrogen now that is coming so basically guys the hydrogen can be of multiple types it can be of multiple types for example there can be i hope that it is visible for example there can be green hydrogen there can be brown hydrogen gray hydrogen blue hydrogen different different types of hydrogen what is green hydrogen guys green hydrogen is that hydrogen in which electricity that will be used for electrolysis that electricity is coming from renewable energy now you see this particular thing hydrogen okay the energy the hydrogen can give us the electricity which will not be leading to any harmful fumes but from where that electricity is coming you can bring that electricity by burning coal you can bring that electricity by using natural gas or you can bring that electricity which will be used in electrolysis by renewable energies so here we get the different types of hydrogen green hydrogen is that hydrogen which is produced by electrolysis of water and the electricity which is used for electrolysis this electricity is derived by using renewable energy like solar energy wind energy now it has the lower carbon footprint why because this electricity is from the renewable sources and this electricity i told you it will split the water in hydrogen and oxygen and by products will be just water and water vapor so emissions have reduced to a large extent then after that there can be brown hydrogen now what is brown hydrogen brown hydrogen is the hydrogen that is produced by using coal where we'll use the coal coal will be used for that electricity which is used for electrolysis okay now in the brine hydrogen you used the coal powered electricity and the emissions are directly released in the air okay so it is not that much clean it is not that much clean then we have gray hydrogen in gray hydrogen for electrolysis the electricity that will be derived it will be produced from natural gas and obviously whatever the emissions will be they will be released into the air so that is also not that much clean and then we have a blue hydrogen in blue hydrogen natural gas is being used for generating electricity but the emissions they will be they will be captured and they will be stored so in terms of hydrogen different different types of hydrogen green hydrogen and blue hydrogen are environmentally more sustainable and green hydrogen is the most sustainable because carbon footprint is negligible or it is nil so therefore now government is developing or now government is focusing on what type of hydrogen green hydrogen so if you read the heading center clears green hydrogen mission okay so i hope guys that first of all this conceptual aspect is clear so on these particular concepts the type of hydrogens 
the question in prelims examination can be asked. So again, I am telling on this particular di direction, the question on the prelims exam can, can be asked. So I hope it is clear and I have provided it in this PDF also. So basically, now the union ca cabinet, let's talk about this particular scheme. So union cabinet has approved the national green hydrogen mission which will make India a global hub to, for the production of hydrogen. We will utilize this hydrogen in-house for powering our vehicles, for electricity needs. This hydrogen can be exported, its derivatives can be exported and as it is clean, India will also be able to achieve the INDC target as well as India will be able to become carbon neutral also as we have taken in the Panch Amrit pledges. Now, let's talk a little bit about the details of this particular scheme and one more thing guys that here I have also taken the reference from the PIB, PIB, Press Information Bureau and other such websites also. So, please download this PDF because many such important points are there. Now, what are the key goals of this particular National Green Hydrogen Mission? So, by 2030, it aims to achieve these goals. Number one, development of green hydrogen production capacity of at least 5 metric million ton. So, at least 5 metric million ton of green hydrogen energy, green hydrogen generation capacity will be developed. It will help in generating, it will help in or it will be associated with the renewable energy addition of 125 gigawatt. Okay, so renewable energy addition of 125 gigawatt will come along with this. The next thing that comes here is that 8 lakh crore rupees in total investment will be mobilized. Now guys see, government had approved this 19,000 crore rupees project, but apart from that, private sector will also be coming. Is it clear or not? So in total, 8 lakh crore rupees investment will be mobilized and it will lead to creation of over 6 lakh jobs. Okay, then next thing is that by this, by this green hydrogen project, Fine. Basically, we will be able to reduce the fossil fuel imports. Now, we know this particular thing guys, that for running the cars, the trucks, the vehicles, we need petrol and diesel. And 82% of crude oil requirements of India are met by imports. So, as we will produce hydrogen, green hydrogen and that green hydrogen will be used to power the vehicles, what will happen? The fossil fuel imports of around 1 lakh crore rupees can be saved. Okay, the next thing that comes in this particular direction is that it will lead to abatement of nearly 50 million metric ton of annual greenhouse gas emissions. Okay, you are running car on petrol and diesel, greenhouse gas emissions are coming out of it. Fine, when we are using directly the, for let's say you are powering an airport. Okay, so electricity that is powering it, it's coming from some kind of a, a car, a, some, some kind of a coal or such kind of a thing. So, obviously there are the carbon footprints that will be reduced. Is it clear or not? Export opportunities for green hydrogen will also be generated. Now, at the same time, at the same time guys, when we talk about this particular uh, mission and this particular plan, okay, what are the detailed features of this particular mission and infographic that I have used here, it is very, very important for our examination. I'll come on this particular infographic as well. But, then other detailed programs is that, that under this particular National Green Hydrogen Mission, SITE program will be launched, S-I-G-H-T. SITE stands for Strategic Invest Intervention for Green Hydrogen Transition Program. SITE program will be launched and under this SITE program, there will be actually two components. Okay, so the main project, main mission under the or main plan under the National Hydrogen Mission, it will be called as a site that is the strategic, strategic intervention for green hydrogen transition program. There will be first two distinct financial incentive mechanisms will be there. Number one, incentive will be given for the manufacturing of electrolyzers, for the manufacturing of electrolyzers. Now, if you remember, I have told you, if you remember, I have told you that electrolysis is to be carried. So, and for that electrolysis, electrolyzers, equipments are needed. So, for manufacturing of electrolyzers, uh, for this, electrolyzers will be incentivized and there will be, for the production of green hydrogen, there will be the financial incentives that will be given. Moreover, at the same time, 
गवर्नमेंट विल ऑल्सो आइडेंटिफाई स्पेसिफिक रीजन दैट आर केपेबल ऑफ सपोर्टिंग लार्ज स्केल प्रोडक्शन ऑफ हाइड्रोजन सो दो पर्टिक्युलर रीजन दो डिस्ट्रिक्ट दो स्टेट विल बी आइडेंटिफाइड एंड दे विल बी प्रोवाइडेड द इंसेंटिव ओके तो ग्रीन हाइड्रोजन हब्स थ्रू आउट द कंट्री विल बी आइडेंटिफाइड The next thing is that standards and regulation framework will also be developed. See, understand this particular thing. Handling hydrogen often becomes very much dangerous because when it comes in contact of air, it might become it it it, it becomes inflammable. It becomes explosive. Okay. Then further, it has been provided that also in order to enhance the hydrogen capabilities, public-private partnership PPP framework, uh, particularly for research and development. particularly for research and development public private partnership framework will be established is it clear or not strategic hydrogen Inno innovation partnership ship which is a public private partnership model on research and development then further a skill development program will be carried now as green hydrogen is to be developed okay we need to have more skilled more uh, skilled workforce for that particular thing as well okay and then finally all the related ministries all the related ministries department institutions they will come together in order to achieve the objectives of this national green hydrogen mission now these are all the prospects this is the outline of the mission now a question comes that what are challenges in this particular direction what are the challenges in this particular direction so first of all guys uh, when we talk about the hydrogen i told you hydrogen is green if all of inputs are green it helps in decarbonization 60% of india's energy come from the fossil fuel sources so here hydrogen can help okay now understand this particular thing guys that when we talk about india the biggest problem in india is that we lack required electrolyzers fine which is needed for making this green for making the hydrogen so manufacturing electrolyzers is a very big challenge which government has to focus the next thing is that guys technologies to adopt hydrogen fuel cells for use in vehicles are largely immature so i told you that fuel cell can be used to to convert this chemical reaction in electricity but fuel cell development in india is very much immature viable models viable car models having this technology are not there it is a very big challenge then the next problem that comes is how to handle the hydrogen because hydrogen guys it it can become very dangerous so if there is a hydrogen leak if there is a hydrogen if hydrogen leaks easily and this this liquid hydrogen reaction uh, if this hydrogen reacts with the air it can lead to explosive reactions okay if hydrogen comes and if hydrogen leaks okay and it comes in contact with air it can lead to explosive reactions so handling and storing of this hydrogen particularly in the vehicles is going to be a very big challenge okay and therefore the tanks in which this hydrogen is to be stored particularly in the vehicles it increases the cost so adopting it will become a challenge but guys at the end of the day we need to have alternative mechanisms we can have the regular ic elect internal combustion engines that operate on petrol and diesel they can be there but along with that ev electric vehicles hydrogen powered vehicles they can be brought so if hydrogen powered vehicles electric vehicles will be brought in certain numbers obviously the transportation sectors carbon footprint will come down and it will help in decarbonization of indian economy so yes there are certain challenges but these challenges can be resolved is it clear or not so that is all guys about this particular article and beyond this beyond this you don't need to read anything either for prelims examination or for the mains examination fine no need to read anything here we have covered pib we have covered hindu and we have covered other traditional other basic concepts as well now moving to the next article okay yes guys if you have any doubt you may ask your doubt okay uh sir uh, can you please share your email or contact details you can contact me if you want you can go to telegram and you can uh, contact me by typing sah uh, at the rate sahil thinking palette so sahil thinking palette is my handle at telegram you can reach me there can green hydrogen mission cause pollution ikbal uh, if you if you if you'll just rewind back we have seen that the biggest advantage of green hydrogen is this only that it will not lead to pollution why because the by products is only steam fine now 
मूविंग टू नेक्स्ट आर्टिकल ओके वाई हैज अ हाई पावर वाई हैज अ हाई पावर लद्दाख कमेटी बीन फॉर्म्ड वाई हैज अ हाई पावर लद्दाख कमेटी बीन फॉर्म्ड नाउ दिस पर्टिकुलर आर्टिकल गाइज दिस पर्टिकुलर आर्टिकल विल सी विद रिस्पेक्ट टू जी एस पेपर नंबर टू जी एस पेपर नंबर टू इशूज ऑफ पॉलिटी इशूज ऑफ पॉलिटी नाउ बिफोर गोइंग इन दिस पर्टिकुलर आर्टिकल गाइज आई वुड लाइक टू गिव यू सम ऑफ अ बैकग्राउंड इन्फॉर्मेशन एंड आफ्टर अंडरस्टैंडिंग दिस पर्टिकुलर बैकग्राउंड इन्फॉर्मेशन विल गो इन दिस पर्टिकुलर आर्टिकल तो बेसिकली you might be knowing this particular thing already guys that what happened in 2019 in 2019 government number 1 government what happened government scrapped the special status given to jammu and kashmir under article number 370 of the indian constitution so special status special safeguards that were given they were taken back second second thing that happened jammu and kashmir jammu and kashmir reorganization act reorganization act also got passed by which jammu and kashmir became a union territory and at the same time the ladakh also became a union territory now since 2019 the people living in ladakh mainly the tribals and the other civil society groups they are petitioning this particular thing that we need some special safeguards we need some special protection for our people now if i give you some of the data guys are according to 2011 census 80% of a population in ladakh region they are tribals 80% of the people they are tribals and they want special safeguards they want special protection so they are demanding that their ladakh region should be included under the 6th schedule of indian constitution now when we talk about the 6th schedule of indian constitution article 244 article 244 of indian constitution provides that the region okay i'll just show you it also fine so here we can see that the article 244 of the indian constitution is there which protects the autonomy a minute which protects the autonomy of tribal population it provides that where the tribal population are these regions can be put under the 6th schedule and once the region is put under the 6th schedule they will be they will be allowed to create autonomous development councils autonomous development councils these autonomous developmental councils will be having wide ranging powers for their governance for their administration as of now when we talk about the 6th schedule right now there are 10 autonomous councils which exist in four states that is assam meghalaya tripura and mizoram so four states are listed under the 6th schedule again i'll repeat assam meghalaya tripura and mizoram and within these four states there are 10 autonomous councils that exist which have a huge power with respect to governance with respect to the administration with respect to the management of their internal affairs okay now the ladakh okay many civil societies in ladakh many civil groups in ladakh are saying that ladakh should also be brought in the sixth schedule and for that particular dimension on that particular dimension now this high powered committee has been constituted has been constituted so guys i hope that first of all this background is clear okay so therefore what had happened now what had happened now now going to this particular article now it will make some sense so basically civil society groups civil society groups in ladakh they are demanding the protection on certain important resources what are these important resources number one they are protection they are asking the protection for their yes they are asking the protection for their land resources they are asking the protection for employment opportunities particularly they are asking the protection since 2019 because special protection that was given to the jammu and kashmir it has been taken back now there are apprehensions in the civil societies people of ladakh as ladakh union territory had come on par with the other regions of the country 
big businessmen can come here they can buy the land they can start new factories and all such kind of a things and the traditional rights of the tribal people living in ladakh over their lands it will get compromised so big businessmen conglomerates big mncs can take away their land outside people will come they will take away their jobs because of this particular thing these fears are coming guys i am giving you a very powerful concept understand and please keep it in your mind now this concept which i am telling you here is very powerful concept in across the all the countries see when three types of deprivation come together when three types of deprivation come together it will lead to unrest it will lead to dispute any country dispute is because of three type of deprivations number 1 economic deprivation economic deprivation number 2 cultural deprivation cultural deprivation and number 3 dem demographic dominance demographic dominance okay so basically when people see that outsiders might come in their region and will take their jobs will take their economic opportunities it will lead to economic deprivation secondly when the people from other parts will come their culture will become more dominant and as their culture will become dominant the people who are natives they feel that their culture is getting their culture is getting uh, is becoming less important and cultural deprivation will come demographic dominance when the outsiders will come their numbers will increase and as their numbers will increase they will get more political power their people okay or the outsiders will become more numerous it will lead to demographic dominance of outsiders this things this thing all these three factors create deprivation in the mind of people and because of this particular deprivation what happens insecurities develop insecurities develop these insecurities lead to lead to often protest often it leads to protest often it leads to such kind of demands for some special protection for some special safeguards as you take example in uh, when we talk about the regions of assam bangladeshis have come there and that is a very big reason why it is a big reason because when the outsiders have come they are taking opportunities economic opportunities economic deprivation is happening they are bringing their own culture cultural deprivation having their numbers are increasing and native people will think that they will become polit politically less significant demographic dominance of the native people is getting reduced anywhere in the world any prob any issue of regionalism that is there it will because of these three types of deprivation that will develop and exactly the similar kind of deprivations we can find that they are emerging in here also these deprivations are emerging here also so basically the fear of big businessmen outside people taking the land taking the job has led to this particular protest now in the line of this particular protest ministry of home affairs have now created a high powered committee okay this high powered committee has been given these uh, has been given the three mandates what is the mandate of this high powered committee number 1 number 1 it will study it will study the region's unique culture their unique language okay and basically their geographical location their strategic importance it will be studied okay then it will also ensure the protection of land employment and uh, la uh, protection of land and protection of employment for their own people for the people of ladakh and then it will strategize inclusive development it will discuss the issues related to the empowerment of ladakh autonomous hill district councils of leh and kargil so basically this panel this expert committee will first of all study that how their culture can get impacted how their land resources can get impacted how their employment can get impacted okay the strategic significance of the region what implications will come and it will it will discuss this particular measures and they will come out with a suitable solution okay so this committee will obviously be submitting the final report in few months of time and when it will come we'll discuss it at that point of a time so right now just committee has been constituted okay now i have told you that basically there are the demand by the civil groups there are the demand by the civil groups that the regions of the ladakh should be included under the sixth schedule where article 244 provides the protections but guys as of now as of now 
the people who are protesting in Ladakh, they are not happy with this particular development where they have committed, constituted a committee. Why? Because in this committee's mandate, there is nowhere clearly written that this committee will consider that whether the Ladakh can be given protection under the sixth schedule, Article 244 of the Indian Constitution or not. Because of that particular thing, people are not completely happy, completely satisfied with this. Moreover, recently, Ministry of Home Affairs had given a reply in Parliament and they had provided that there is even, but indirectly, indirectly they have provided this particular thing that already government is doing much for the development of the Ladakh region. For example, what has happened? Recently, I have uh, provided this particular information also here in this paragraph. So recently, Ministry of Home Affairs had informed the parliamentary standing committee that the objective of inclusion of tribal population under the sixth schedule is to ensure their overall socio-economic development. Yes, why we include tribal people in sixth schedule? So that their development happens. This is the only reason. Apart from that, there is no reason. But now it is being provided that the UT of Ladakh, UT, uh, UT of Ladakh's administration has already been taken care of by the union government. They are giving sufficient funds to Ladakh so that their overall development can happen. So when anyhow extra funds are being given, when anyhow the government is taking care of administration, why special safeguard under six schedule is needed? So it shows indirectly, it shows indirectly that government is providing that sixth schedule might not be coming. But we need to see as final what will happen. Moreover, recently guys what had happened, the reservation of scheduled tribes. Reservation of the scheduled tribes in the direct recruitment into the direct jobs have been increased recently from 10% to 45%. And according to the government, the reservation to the scheduled tribe that has been given 45% reservation, it will safeguard their employment opportunities. So all these particular things government is doing. And why then there is a need of the sixth schedule? So this is something that is coming. Okay. So guys, this is all about this particular article, the background the present issue, what might happen, what government is thinking and beyond that you are not required to go too much into the detail because if a question will come in the exam around this particular information you can write any question 10 marker, 15 marker coming in the examination. So guys I hope that you have understood. Okay. Any doubt if you have with respect to this particular topic you can write. I will just 2-3 seconds I will take the doubts if they are there otherwise we will move to the next article. Dharamveer, uh, from 10 months I am studying and I found there is no need to read newspaper after your videos and notes. Glad Dharamveer you are liking it. Your sessions are really helpful. Glad guys you are liking it. Okay, uh, yes guys any doubt if there is there? Okay, chalo. Moving to next article now. Moving to next article now. Guys understand this particular thing that as we are discussing all these particular articles uh, and I am showing you the synoptic notes, the point is that please go to the telegram channel and download the notes. It, are, it is only for you so that you don't need to waste time in writing the same kind of a things. Okay. And in synoptic notes, we follow one page, one topic format. So entire topic will be completed in one page. Okay. Chalo, moving on. So this article. Now, first of all, let's read the heading of article. Acid attack victims failed by lack of cohesive law law legal processes now this particular article guys we'll see with respect to gs paper number two gs paper number two women related issues or gender violence women related issues or the gender based violence gender based violence okay and at the same time critical evaluation of government laws and schemes critical evaluation of government laws and schemes it is also under gs paper number two only so recently what has happened you might have seen an incident where a girl in delhi was attacked with acid acid was thrown on that girl we find this particular instances that they are pretty regular occurrences so many number of times these matters don't come in the news because majority of matters are happening in semi-urban areas or rural areas. But this is actually a very big problem that needs to be controlled. Now, let's discuss some of background information from society point of view and then we'll come in this exact article. Okay. So basically guys, when we talk about, when we talk about 
Indian society, but it is not unique to Indian society. It is there in almost all the societies. Patriarchy. Patriarchy is a big phenomena. What is patriarchy? Patriarchy means that the male, they are the dominant out of both genders. Male will make the decisions. Male will hold the authority. Male will be the major decision makers. Often, this patriarchy turns in toxic masculinity. This patriarchy turns in toxic masculinity. Now, first of all, what do we mean by masculinity? Masculinity means male-like features. So, basically, guys, when we talk about the personality, they are divided in, there are two types of personalities. Feminine personality, feminine personality is for women. Masculine personality, masculine personality is for male. What is masculine personality? Masculine personality means that the male will be more rigid. Male will be more firm. They will be more logical, rational. It is assumed. I am not saying it happens, but it is assumed. At the same time, there is a feminine personality. Feminine personality attributed to the women, which means that they are more soft-spoken, they are more sensitive to their emotions and all such kind of a things. Sometimes the masculinity, that is the male personality, it becomes toxic masculinity. Toxic masculinity means that male assumes that they are dominant, they are superior, they cannot be challenged, okay? Their wish, their command has to be followed whatever happens. And when this toxic masculinity becomes a major dominant, when this toxic masculinity becomes dominant, what happens? What happens? Male, they start to treat women. They start to treat women in an inferior capacity, in an inferior capacity, in a inferior capacity. And in this capacity, when women, when women don't oblige the male, when women don't oblige the male, what happen? Revenge, gender injustice happens. Revenge, injusti revenge justice is taken by these male. What will happen? You might have heard the word such as revenge rape. What is this revenge rape? Revenge rape is a, a revenge rape is un, revenge rape is a sexual intercourse without the consent that was just done to teach that women a lesson. That is revenge rape, very heinous kind of thing. Acid attacks also happen under the guise of this toxic masculinity. When we talk about guys, the acid attacks, majority of acid attacks, in fact, 90% plus of acid attacks, they happen. Why they happen? Because a girl has turned down the sexual favor has turned down some other favor of a male okay so sometimes male they chase women okay for some romantic favor some sexual favors or chasing them for a relationship but when women turn down them it it hurts the male ego it hurts the male ego and when the male ego is hurt their toxic masculinity leads them the toxic masculinity leads them to attack women and gender based injustice gender based attacks they come to the they, they come there and in the and this is one example acid attacks they are carried acid attacks they are carried now as we talk about the acid attacks guys understand this particular thing if we take the government's own data acid attacks are on rise in the past few years for example guys you see this thing national crime record bureau national crime record bureau according to their data there is rise in gender based crime for example in 2011 you don't need to remember the absolute numbers okay but in 2011 there were around 83 acid attack cases that were there in 2021 it increased to 176 okay uh, so, fine then uh, it is something that has happened in 2019 it was actually 249 so you don't need to remember the data, but 83, two digit in 2011 increased to 176 and between 249 to 2019. So the numbers of acid attacks are increasing. Majority of acid attack cases that happen, they are from the states of West Bengal and Uttar Pradesh. So Uttar Pradesh and West Bengal are the two of the states where majority of the cases are coming. Now, what are the reasons? What are the reasons that the acid attack cases have increased at such a pace in India? Number one reason is that, that there is the lack of cohesive legislation. 
we don't have a very strong and very stringent laws on two things number one regulating the sale of assets regulating the sale of assets you can buy asset you can procure asset from any shop second thing is that punishment for perpetrators is not very much stringent and here we have a case study of our neighboring nation that is bangladesh so we find this particular thing guys that actually bangladesh had very high acid attack instances very high acid attack cases were there but in 2000s bangladesh came out with the two specific laws number one number one what happened they banned the sale of acid okay in open market and secondly they came with a stringent punishment for the people who are going who are committing this crime of acid attacks and drastically the cases have reduced in bangladesh drastically the cases have reduced in bangladesh now i can show you the act of that bangladesh also but that is not that much important but i'll show you here so basically okay so yes so basically what happened there is bangladesh acid control act 2002 okay the bangladesh acid control act 2002 and first and second acid crime prevention act 2002 so these two acts have brought down the acid attack cases in bangladesh very much down so point is that that the activists are saying that if we have cohesive laws if we have strong laws if we have strong implement and enforcement in india also the acid attack cases can come down now already in past national commission for women national commission for women had drafted a law a specific law has they also drafted that is prevention of offenses by acid bill 2008 but this particular act did not got passed and because we don't have such a stringent specific legislation a culture of impunity is also there in the people okay now what has happened when nirbhaya gang rape case happened after the nirbhaya gang rape case it was an opportunity that we could have addressed the gender based injustice to a larger capacity though it happened also justice verma committee was constituted after the nirbhaya rape case and justice nirbhaya committee recommended a lot of changes okay now here what had happened fine after the justice justice verma commission report that came government also amended the ipc indian penal code and recognized the acid attack as a separate offense with a minimum punishment of 10 years and a maximum punishment of life imprisonment so we amended the ipc later words supreme court also came with a specific directive and supreme court brought the acid sale brought the acids under the poison act of 1919 they brought the asset under the poison act of 1919 and it was provided to the government that government need to ensure that acid can only be sold by the licensed retailer so only the people who have license to sell acid they can sell the acid and acid is to be sold only by authorized outlets fine you cannot buy it from any shop it will be sold only by authorized outlets and address proof photo identity is to be asked from a buyer before he buys the acid that is certain directives that have come by the supreme court and government also tried to amend the ipc but the point is enforceability the point is enforceability the point is implementation that is very much weak only those cases are dealt very strictly or stringently which comes to the limelight which comes to the mainstream media but majority of the cases majority of the cases they happen in rural india they happen in rural india they are never coming to the limelight awareness is not there okay even the acid are being sold openly in the market so because of this particular thing guys this is the okay fine guys i hope that you have understood this particular article now we'll move to next article till then guys if you have any doubt you may ask okay yes guys if you have any doubt you may ask is this article from hindu yes all the articles are from hindu only now, Jaligattu, cultural practice or cruelty? Jaligattu, cultural practice or cruelty? Now, this article is also taken from the text and context section. Now, guys, this particular article we have seen yesterday also. Okay, now this particular article, guys, we'll see with respect to GS paper number two. GS paper number two, issues of polity. And there is one dimension which is important for exam. Okay, <clears throat> that is culture culture versus
मॉडर्न आइडियाज या फिर कल्चर वर्सेस लिबरलिज्म कल्चर वर्सेस लिबरलिज्म नाउ अंडरस्टैंड दिस पर्टिकुलर थिंग when we talk about guys often there are many age old practices that are going on age old practices that are going on these practices are carried in the name of culture in the name of tradition but often we say that these traditions these cultures are often violative of some other person's right okay or they are based on some old age ideas often they are said that they are based on some kind of an orthodoxies also it is said so therefore we need to reform but when we try to bring reform it is said that it is a attack on culture nobody is correct nobody is wrong here is it clear or not fine we are not saying that this is one correct this is one wrong these are the viewpoints that different different people have i don't endorse any one particular viewpoint here that this is correct this is correct every point has its own sensitivities every point has its own justifications now in this particular direction guys this issue jalikattu issue is going on now if you remember we have discussed this entire issue in lot more detail in the previous class as well today also there is one article that has come on jalikattu in the text and context section and you please be ready there are many such kind of articles that will come in the days to come but once we have understood this particular article much more new substance will not come okay now let's discuss this particular article guys now if you have seen it in the previous class very good just revise it absolute conceptual clarity will come more new value addition i have also made in these notes and if you have not seen then also you please be very careful okay some new additions are also there okay now when we talk about guys jalikattu what is jalikattu jalikattu is a competitive sport it is a competitive sport it is an event to honor the bull owners it is an event to honor the bull owners who are rearing these bulls okay who are keeping these bulls alive so we need to award them so what happen in this particular in this particular uh, jalikattu there will be a sporting event that will be organized the contestants they will try to tame that bull there will be a prize money if the contestants are able to tame that bull they will get the prize money if they are fail to tame that bull that prize money will be given to the bull owner now this particular festival is celebrated in january during the tamil harvest festival what is that is a pongal so pongal is a harvest festival in january it is celebrated now basically guys it has been provided that presently as we talk about fine uh, breeding has become more of an artificial process breeding has become more of an artificial process and there are certain varieties or certain breeds of the bulls that are going extinct and it has been provided that at least for this festival this particular sport certain varieties of bull are kept alive so if this festival will not be there these varieties of bull will go extinct why because because the breeding is become has become an artificial process now fine so basically it is provided that jalikattu is nothing but a way to protect these male animals which otherwise be used for meat they might go extinct okay so this is it is said that jalikattu should be continued now in the past however there have been petitions that jalikattu is a kind of a torturous sport it is a torturous sport to the uh, to the animals now because of this particular thing guys there is a little bit history and i have provided this entire history okay so guys this entire history i have provided in just seven eight lines okay beyond that you don't need to read any more thing number 1 in 2011 what happened in 2011 the center government added bulls to the list of animals whose training and exhibition is prohibited and by that particular thing what happened the bulls their exhibition their exhibition in jalikattu was not it cannot be done they can then in 2014 the in 2014 what happened the supreme court banned the bull taming sport jalikattu okay in this particular capacity guys we have seen that uh, animal welfare board of india animal welfare board of india animal welfare board of india has reached the supreme court and supreme court gave the judgment in a nagaraj case a nagaraj case supreme court gave the judgment and in this particular judgment jalikattu got banned jalikattu got banned then what happened in 2016 there was a little bit change that happened at that point of a time in 2016 union environment ministry union environment ministry cancelled this particular ban just before the tamil nadu elections were there 
So before Tamil Nadu elections, this particular ban was removed. And it was seen as a political move. It was seen as a political attempt. Okay. Now guys, after this particular thing, Supreme Court stayed the 2016 Union Government notification. What happened? Again, Jali uh, Again, that ban came in existence. Okay. Then what happened? Finally, Tamil Nadu government then came in 2017. Tamil Nadu government in 2017 passed the Prevention of Cruelty to, it passed the Prevention of Cruelty to Animals Act of 2017. Okay, and Prevention of Cruelty to Animals Rules of 2017. And under this particular act and under this particular rules, exemption was given to the Jalikattu festival. It is said that in Jalikattu, bulls can be used and it will not be cruelty. It will not be cruelty. So again, Jalikattu came in existence. Is it clear or not? Now, because of this particular thing, guys, again, the petitions went to the Supreme Court. Okay, this statute, this amendment reopened the gates of the gates for the conduct of the Jalikattu. Jalikattu started and then the petitions reached to Supreme Court. Now, the primary question, guys, that is involved here are these questions. I am including all of these. Number one, number one issue that comes here is Article 29. Article 29 of the Indian Constitution. Now, Article 29 of Indian Constitution gives educational and cultural rights. It guarantees educational and cultural rights of the citizens. And Jalikattu is often called as the part of culture. So as a part of their culture, Jalikattu festival can be observed. It is a part of their fundamental right, article number 29. Okay. Second thing guys that comes here is that the people they have provided that the Jalikattu is a tool for conserving indigenous breeds of livestock. Today these bulls are not needed for, for, uh, for breeding. So they will go extinct or they will be anyhow, they will be used in meat. Okay, so for their conservation, the Jalikattu festival is important. The bull owners, they take a very good care of these bulls. They give them a very good diet, everything. Okay, moreover, it has also been provided by Tamil Nadu government that it is a traditional event and it doesn't violate the principle of compassion and humanity. Okay, we take care that compassion and humanity should not be violated. Moreover, it has also been provided that this social cultural dimension is also being taught in the high school curriculum. Okay, so the next generation should also know about their culture. Okay, it is a process where animals and uh, animals and men, okay, animals and the society both participate in uh, both participate. Okay, now moving on. In this particular direction the next thing that comes guys here is that Tamil Nadu government has also provided this particular thing they have also provided this particular thing that see duty to ensure the well-being of animal does not give a concomitant right to the animal to demand well-being see this thing Tamil Nadu government said that it is our duty that we should protect animal we should treat them with compassion but it doesn't give the right to animal that you can ask protection so you cannot say that the animals have a right, okay, and on the basis of that right, you cannot take the Jalikattu. We will treat them, but a concomitant right for the animal cannot be asked because in the constitution of India, rights are given to person and person are humans. Animals are not person. This is one justification that has been given. I covered that in the previous day article also, okay. The next Tamil Nadu government says that when we talk about the rights, rights are given by law which are made by humans and rights are of two kinds. Rights against the state are there, rights against the fellow human beings are there, rights against the nature are there, but there is no concept of rights of animal in the constitution of India. And as there is no concept of rights of animal in the constitution of India, on the moral grounds we will protect them, on the moral grounds we will treat them with their dignity, but it cannot be enforced. Fine, a pressure cannot be enforced that they have their own independent rights. This is something that has happened. But guys, at the same time, the critics, they have provided this particular thing that even in the past, Sati, Sati, Dowry, they were also the part of cultures. And as the Sati and, Sati and Dowry have been, have been banned, in this particular thing, cultural practices can get banned. That is something that has been provided. Moreover, it has also been provided, it has also been provided that in the past, there are many reports where the people got injured when they were playing the sport of Jalikattu. Bulls, they get injured. Many people have died also. 
many poor people particularly participate here okay because the prize money that is there it's very important to them and it is actually a very dangerous kind of a sport so it needs to be banned so this is something guys which has come in this particular direction however however in this particular direction the detailed judgment will be given by the supreme court in few weeks of time and when that detailed judgment will happen we will summarize that particular thing up till now beyond this note fine we need not to go that is all guys about this particular article now moving to the next editorial article the values of local self governance the values of local self governance now this particular article guys <clears throat> will see with respect to gs paper number 2 gs paper number 2 grassroot institutions grassroot institutions okay uh, uh, evaluation of panchayati raj and urban local body institution okay now let's take the article so basically guys why this particular article on local self governance has come now it's because of the fact that guys recent now we are observing the 30 year anniversary of 73rd and 74th constitutional amendment act so 73rd constitutional amendment act constitutionalized the panchayati raj institutions 74th constitutional amendment act constitutionalized the urban local bodies okay and a third tier of governance got a constitutional status in india first tier is union second tier is state and third tier is panchayat in rural india and urban local bodies in urban india so third tier of governance got added by the 73rd and 74th constitutional amendment act is it clear or not now we are observing the 30 year anniversary now guys the article is talking about it that by the 73rd and 74th constitutional amendment act state governments have to constitute panchayat and municipalities is it clear or not and they will act as a third tier of governance in the federal structure of india very good all these thing happened but at the same time it has also been provided it has also been provided that though reforms came though reforms came though we are celebrating the 30 year anniversary of the panchayat and the urban local bodies but there are many challenges these institution has become ineffective okay now there are three questions that are being discussed in this particular article question number 1 why should local government be empowered why there is a need to give power to these local institutions second why are they weak despite of constitutional reforms you brought 73rd 74th amendment act okay 11th and 12th schedule came but why they are still weak can the idea of local self governance be revi revived okay can they be revived all these three questions will be discussed and guys exactly exam oriented stuff exactly exam oriented stuff now moving on guys in this particular direction so basically the point comes that when we talk about the local self governance local self governance is brought number 1 is brought number 1 to provide for efficient provision of public goods efficient provision of public goods now understand this particular thing guys more the smaller jurisdiction the government can focus on people more carefully okay bigger jurisdiction so many people government cannot focus on their people now when we talk about guys the public goods public goods are those basic essential goods that have to be given to everybody so that they can live their dignified life health is a public good education is a public good sanitation is a public good so these public goods are to be provided to all the citizens and government has to ensure basically the point is that efficient provisioning of the public goods can happen if there are the small jurisdiction so panchayat panchayat members know all few hundred people living in villages and they can effectively provide these public services so therefore small jurisdictions are preferable second thing guys that it deepens the democracy it deepens the democracy so if government will be more close to people people can participate in the part government processes democracy will become participatory democracy will become participatory so for participatory democracy these institutions help and therefore they are helping in the deepening of our democracy now guys moving on in this particular direction okay now when we talk about the 73rd and 74th Uh, amendment act they have given a lot of powers to panchayat they have given a lot of powers to panchayat and municipalities so that they can function as institution of self governance so that they can they can be, uh, work as an institution of self govern uh, uh, self governance 
they can prepare the developmental plans they can implement their those plans they can bring the schemes for the economic development and guys a large number of subjects have been given to both panchayat as well as municipalities is it clear a wide number of powers 11th and 12th schedule are there wide number of powers have been given to them but still why it is limited because guys number one we find this particular thing that still <clears throat> there is a failure of the state government state governments they don't want to share the power with the panchayats and urban local bodies even the courts even the courts they have failed to they have failed to interpret this particular act in letter and spirit spirit means the objective behind an act this particular act's spirit was to empower them but the court has failed to interpret the real objective of the 73rd and 74th amendment act now there are limitations on multiple number of factors number 1 there is a discretion that has been given to the states regarding the devolution of powers and local taxes which power will be given what type of taxes they can impose that discretion is there in the hand of the state government only and often they have not given much powers they have not given them much powers secondly the state governments are also reluctant often they are reluctant to to implement the 74th amendment particularly for the urban local bodies basically guys it has been provided that if cities will become more empowered if mayors in the cities will become more empowered if municipality will become more empowered what will happen people will uh, basically people will give all credit of development to municipalities only they will not give credit to the state government so state government's authority will come down so therefore deliberately they don't empower the urban local bodies now it has been provided guys that in this particular direction there is a very good judgment of patna high court that can be a very good precedence so recently what happened patna high court declared some of the provisions of the bihar municipal act 2021 as unconstitutional this is a very important understand this thing so what happened recently bihar municipal amendment act came in the bihar and what happened it transferred the powers of appointment of grade c and grade d employees of municipalities from the standing committee of municipality to the state government okay so grade c and grade d officials earlier the power given appointment power was given to municipality then that power got transferred to the state government so what happened municipality's power got reduced this change has been invalidated by the patna high court and by this particular thing what has happened the patna high court has given has restored the powers of the municipality and has recognized that municipalities are not are not the secondary institutions rather they are the institutions which have their own importance this is something that has happened now we see that india is becoming a, basically centralization is happening centralization is happening power center is consolidating more and more power in this centralization decentralization needs to be upheld and patna high court's judgment it becomes important here clear so that is all guys about this particular article and now we'll move to the next article okay so this particular article guys an open letter to the indian film industry open letter to indian film industry okay uh, basically guys this particular article is talking that now the film makers are not speaking against uh, the wrong things that are happening they are appeasing to majority they are appeasing to dominant political ideology here in this article there is one very beautiful example that has been given the movie the movie by the name of the great dictator the great dictator now great dictator movie fine this movie uh, was uh, basically this movie was uh, uh, was uh, in, in this movie acting was done by charlie chaplin in this movie the direction was done by the charlie chaplin okay this movie's writing was done by charlie chaplin okay now in this movie they showcased the hitler they showcased the tyranny of hitler at that point of a time nobody supported this film project because nobody wanted to invite the wrath of hitler so charlie chaplin has to do everything okay and then this film became one of the most symbolic and one of the most hit movie of all times this is something that has happened so this movie came in 1938 when the hitler was very powerful so nobody was was nobody wanted to involve in this particular project but this movie had a lot of symbolism at that point of a time now the article is talking about it that today the cinema can shape a perception and as cinema can shape perception many of the wrong things that are there in the society that nobody is speaking against cinema can speak against that but today what has happened the film makers 
फिल्म मेकर्स आर फेलिंग टू डू दैट पर्टिकुलर थिंग फिल्म मेकर्स आर फेलिंग टू डू दैट पर्टिकुलर थिंग नाउ द फिल्म मेकर्स वट दे आर डूइंग बेसिकली जस्ट अ मिनट द एक्टर्स प्रोड्यूसर्स एक्टर प्रोड्यूसर डायरेक्टर्स फाइन दे आर नॉट स्टैंडिंग फॉर कॉन्स्टिट्यूशनल वैल्यूज बिकॉज दे विल फेस बाइकॉट बिकॉज दे विल फेस थ्रेट्स so when the individual freedoms are challenged when there are some social injustices that are happening they are not speaking against them they are deliberately they are trying to play clean they are trying to play clean now film industries has become a site of ideological and political contention religious imagery patriotism nationalism okay they propagate even the film industry now now guys if we see this particular thing fine today there is a silent majority there is a silent majority that want the films who do not propagate communalism who do not propagate casteism fine xenophobia racism okay Eth ethnic ethnic uh, basically the ethnic uh, um, basically on the lines of ethnicity okay on the lines of caste on the lines of religion there is a lot of lot of hatredness that is getting spreaded out now many of the film makers what they are doing they are not picking picking up the themes on this particular direction national consciousness that can be promoted by the film makers they are not doing this particular thing now guys many names of films have been given in this particular article where the majority ruling government's vendetta is being promoted okay such kind of a thing should not happen movies need to show some deep and meaningful things it has been provided so basically the article is talking about this particular thing that the films and serials films and serials often give the message to um, message to preserve the humanity is it clear or not many of the voices in india which cannot come forward these voices are given these voices are given representation into the movies is it clear or not so that is something that has to be done now b r ambedkar has said this thing constitutional morality is not a natural sentiment automatically constitutional morality constitutional morality means to adhere with the constitutional ideals automatically it will not come it has to be cultivated in the people and how people will learn that by when their perceptions will change and who will change perceptions movies and cinemas change the perception so they need to fulfill that particular role now guys beyond that please don't go in this article because this article is heavily politicized political tone is there many names of movies plots and such kind of a things are there so i have with a lot of effort i have churned out the most important substance that is there beyond that please don't go tal kaveri is a south india's a top star party destination so guys this particular article will see with respect to the prelims examination this article guys will see with respect to prelims examination okay before moving guys i just want to address one thing okay so uh, there were few comments that came yesterday that sir uh, newspaper analysis is becoming little bit longer but guys you see this thing that there is not even a single article that we can skip there is not even a single line of discussion that would we would have avoided you know this thing that we don't even waste a single minute in just i uh, find i don't tell any useless stories even i focus that even if i am taking your 1 minute you should get the highest utility out of it so some days it goes but please understand that if articles are there we cannot leave them okay it is very easy for me that i will selectively choose two three articles and i'll say that i will do this fine but i believe in giving you full worth of the time that you are spending here on this platform okay so as we are taking the entire newspaper some days it will take more time so don't focus that okay 10 15 minutes or more just see that whether utility is there or not fine now tal kaveri is south india's top star party destination so guys this article is talking about the tal kaveri and often the mapping based questions comes okay so basically when we talk about the tal kaveri i will we will see tal kaveri and we will connect the tal kaveri with the hanle of ladakh okay so i hope it is visible now the tal kaveri tal kaveri it is in kodagu district in karnataka it is at kodagu district in karnataka and it is the source of kaveri river very very important location so tal kaveri it is in kodagu karnataka and it is the source of kaveri river and it is now emerging as south india's hanle south india's hanle now what is hanle guys hanle it is the india's first dark reserve first dark sky reserve what is this dark sky reserve i'll explain you 
basically guys understand this particular thing today everywhere we find artificial light and when there is a lot of artificial light the the, the sky exploration becomes very difficult it is it becomes very difficult to see the stars to see the constellations okay now dark sky reserve is that particular place where there is a minimum artificial light there is a minimum light disturbance that is the dark sky reserve and these dark sky reserves will only be at the place where development is not much okay city light is not much so now the tal kaveri it is becoming south india's hanle now the hanle if i tell you little bit of the hanle guys fine i have given you little bit of uh, additional notes here now not there in the article so please download this pdf so basically what is dark sky reserve dark sky reserve is a designation given to a place that has policies to ensure that a tract of land fine or region has minimal artificial light interference vehicular light should not be there lighted buildings should not be there so the place where the policies are there to avoid this artificial light that can be designated as a dark reserve now international dark sky association usa international dark sky association usa gives this particular designation of international dark sky place international dark sky park international dark sky sanctuary international dark sky reserve these classifications are given by the international dark sky association it is a not for profit organization of usa these things are very important for prelims examination please keep it in your mind now recently why this dark sky reserve was in news because guys recently ladakh union territory fine has established first dark sky reserve in ladakh in hanle so hanle in ladakh has been declared as a first dark sky reserve of our country in this particular direction guys department of science and technology okay indian institute of astrophysics indian institute of astrophysics Bangalore, they are providing all the scientific and technological assistance to develop Hanle in Ladakh as the dark sky reserve. And as this Hanle has been developed as the dark sky reserve, what will happen? Guys, in a way, it will promote astro tourism in Ladakh. Now, this is the idea that has been given by the government also, but I don't guys agree too much with it. Astro tourism. Astro tourism means you are inviting the tourist who will come there to see the sky, the stars, etc. Now, understand this thing. If a tourist influx will be there, they will come with their cars, then they'll need homestays, then they need hotels, then they need discos. Automatically, the pristine nature of that place will get disturbed. Okay. So I am not very much, I am not very much uh, aligned with the idea of developing astro tourism. I believe that certain places need to be maintained in their pristinity. But anyhow, that is one particular point also there that is there. Now, guys, one more thing I want to tell you that is India, is Ladakh the first dark sky reserve of india yes but is it world's first dark sky reserve no there are many other dark sky reserves that we have across the world and here i had taken the help from indian express newspaper and i have given you the list of dark sky reserves around the world that we have okay so you can download this pdf notes and you can read that also okay so france united kingdom wales australia new zealand germany us mexico us canada okay fine <laughs> Uh, just a minute fine ireland namibia so these countries have the dark sky reserves fine i hope that it is visible and if it list is not visible here you can download it in the pdf as well okay now tal kaveri okay so basically guys when we talk about the tal kaveri so uh, we have seen this particular thing that it is in karnataka which is a source of kaveri and it is emerging as south india's hanle why it is emerging as South India's Hanle? Because there is a minimum artificial light. There is a minimum artificial light. Hanle, when we talk about it, it is India's first dark sky reserve. Already we have seen this particular point. What is a dark sky reserve? I have already provided you this particular thing. Now, when we talk about the South India, guys, South India can host many dark sky reserve sites. Why? Because when we talk about the Western Ghats, Western Ghats or the hill ranges, there many dark sky reserves can be provided. Now, what this article is talking about? So, Bangalore Astronomical Society, which is a group of volunteers, they are hosting the star parties here. They are hosting the star parties here. Now, what are these star parties? What are these star parties? Star parties are uh, not the celebrities, Shah Rukh Khan, Salman Khan, they are not coming here. People will come and they will observe the stars. Okay. That is not that much important. So, fine. These are the most important thing. Now, they are telling that at well, the, the parties are on weekdays, Friday, Saturday, Sunday. Not very important thing. Okay. So that is all guys about it. Now moving to next article.
ओके गैम्बलिंग एंड गेमिंग एंड गैम्बलिंग गेमिंग एंड गैम्बलिंग नाउ गाइज दिस पर्टिकुलर आर्टिकल वी आर रीडिंग फ्रॉम पास्ट थ्री डेज एवरी डे इन द न्यूज पेपर आर यू गेटिंग इट और नॉट तो बेसिकली द सेम थिंग हैज बीन रिपीटेड अगेन नॉट इवन अ सिंगल सब्सटांस इज देयर बट आई हैव प्रोवाइडेड यू द सिनोप्टिक नोट्स एज वेल हेयर वॉट इज दिस एंटायर इशू बेसिकली गाइज वेन वी टॉक अबाउट द ऑनलाइन गेमिंग ऑनलाइन गेमिंग राइट नाउ इज नॉट रेगुलेटेड इन इंडिया सो देयर फॉर द यूनियन गवर्नमेंट हैज प्रेजेंटेड अ प्रपोजल ओके एंड दिस प्रपोजल इज दिस ओके सो गाइज आई विल आई विल बी टेकिंग दिस पर्टिकुलर आर्टिकल इन अ काइंड ऑफ अ सिनोप्टिक मैनर वाई बिकॉज फ्रॉम पास्ट थ्री डेज आई एम एवरी डे डूइंग इट सो आई एम टेकिंग इट इन अ सिनोप्टिक मैनर बट यू विल गेट ऑल दीज पर्टिकुलर थिंग्स सो रिसेंटली यूनियन गवर्नमेंट दे हैव प्रपोज दैट दे विल अमेंड द आई टी इन्फॉर्मेशन टेक्नोलॉजी इंटरमीडियरी लाइबिलिटी डिजिटल मीडिया एथिक्स कोड रूल ट्वेंटी ट्वेंटी वन सो इन शॉर्ट फॉर्म दे विल अमेंड द आई टी रूल्स एंड अंडर आई टी रूल्स दे विल एड ऑनलाइन गेम ऑल्सो राइट नाउ अंडर आई टी रूल्स वट कम्स ओ टी टी प्लेटफॉर्म्स सच एज नेटफ्लिक्स एमेजन दे कम अंडर आई टी टी ओ टी टी दे आर आई टी रूल्स सेकेंडली सोशल मीडिया इंटरमीडियरीज दे कम अंडर आई टी रूल्स एंड थर्डली अंडर आई टी रूल्स डिजिटल न्यूज ऑल्सो कम नाउ दे वॉन्ट टू इंक्लूड दैट द नाउ दे वॉन्ट टू दैट ऑनलाइन गेम्स शुड ऑल्सो बी इंक्लूडेड इन टू द आई टी रूल्स एंड बाय दिस पर्टिकुलर थिंग दे प्रोवाइड दिस पर्टिकुलर थिंग दैट सेल्फ रेगुलेटरी बॉडी विल बी डेवलप्ड फॉर रेगुलेटिंग द ऑनलाइन गेम्स नो योर कस्टमर फाइन इफ अ पर्सन इज प्लेइंग ऑनलाइन गेम ऑन अ प्लेटफॉर्म दे आर आइडेंटिटी क्रेडेंशियल एक्सेट्रा विल बी प्रोवाइडेड अपॉइंटमेंट ऑफ अ ग्रीवेंस एड्रेसल ऑफिसर यू आर प्लेइंग एन ऑनलाइन गेम यू हैव सम कंप्लेट there will be the grievance addressal officer now guys online game we have seen in the previous class are those games where you are staking some money so the definition of online game is that where you are staking some money now it has been provided that many states such as the tamil nadu they want even stricter regulation of this particular sector in the past they have tried to completely ban the online online gaming because students are getting addicted they are staking money in these online games then they are losing their money it is increasing anxiety and depression in the people because people take money on loan they stake the money on these online games so as money is being staked on to these online games tamil nadu government want even more strict stricter control on that now the point is that the new proposal of union government that has come whether they are going to bring strict control whether they will give power to the state government that they can bring additional rules or not clarity is not there fine so whether the additional power will be given to the states or not power is, uh, the clarity is not there center's draft remains ambiguous on the question of whether states can have additional restrictions or not this is one issue that has come now guys in the past in the past there are the bans that have been imposed on the online games by the states such as the tamil nadu karnataka also but the game companies have challenged that particular thing in the court saying that we are not the games of chance we are the games of skill games of chance is one where there is pure luck games of skill is there when a person can use the mind for example horse racing in horse racing you need to know certain things then only you can predict you need to know the condition of the horse you need to know the condition of the jockey the rider ground conditions okay the track record of horse only then you can stake bet so there is some skill so games of skill can be taken games of chance on that the ban can be brought so the online game companies they say that we are not games of chance we are games of skill on this particular direction guys in this particular direction this particular issue comes so therefore now the government has come with a law and we need to see that how this particular thing will further evolve now government had said that our aim to bring control on the online games is not to hinder the growth of industry okay we don't want to hinder the growth of this particular industry rather we want to regularize this industry they say that in future we also want to curb violent addictive or sexual content in video games is it clear or not now it has been provided by the article that government is trying to control this activity regulate that activity but government need to ensure that public participation public opinion should also be taken up okay so that is all guys about this particular article now moving on to the next article okay so this article only this particular point is important okay india now article reads india lags in automation of industry despite possessing tech prowess robotics industry now when we talk about guys the china china has 187 robots for every 10000 employee in india there is only four robots every 
10,000 employees. So in India, there are only four robots every 10,000 employees. So basically, it is being said that when we talk about the, the manufacturing capabilities of China, they are using more number of robots. India needs to incorporate more robots. Now, Industrial Revolution 4.0 is coming. Industrial Revolution 4.0, where machine-to-machine -machine communication, artificial intelligence, all these particular things will increase. So, we need to incorporate more and more robots. Is it clear or not? Fine. So, here there is a just comparison. Beyond that, there is nothing in this particular article. Is it clear or not? But you please keep in your mind, guys, that as we will deploy more and more robots, obviously, it will bring some challenge on the employability of the people. In India, already we have cheap labor. Okay, China's labor cost is increasing now. So it is compulsion for them to adopt, to, to, to deploy the robots. But do we need it in India? So this could be an opinion. Okay, then. Supreme Court stays order allowing Uttar Pradesh local body polls without OBC reservation. Okay. So guys, I have made one short video on this particular thing in where one minute I have explained this topic. I have covered this particular topic in past, just the day before yesterday, two, three days, continuously this particular topic came in the news. Now, what is this entire issue? This issue is relevant for our quality related issues, GS paper number two. Now, what is this particular issue, guys? So, what has happened? When we talk about the constitution, article 243D, okay, I have shared the notes of this article also already. Article 243D, and we have article 243T. As per article 243D and 243T, seats in the local bodies can be reserved for the OBC people. And that reserve, seats can be reserved for the OBC people by the state government. Uttar Pradesh government recently reserved the seats for the OBC people in their urban local bodies. But that particular thing was challenged in Allahabad High Court. Allahabad High Court said that you cannot reserve the seats for OBC in the urban local body election. Why Allahabad High Court said? Allahabad High Court said that you failed the triple test. You failed triple test. Because again, again, I'm telling this triple test, etc. I have covered multiple times in the, uh, uh, in the newspaper in past one week. Be, fine, in past three, four days. Now, what is the triple test? Triple test means that before reserving the seat for OBC, before reserving the seat for OBC, number one, a commission has to be constituted, which will do the rigorous study, which will do the rigorous study about the condition of the backward class people, what is their present representation. Second, it will recommend the proportion that how much percentage of seats are to be reserved. And third, total number of seats for scheduled caste, scheduled tribe and OBC people should not go above 50%, should not go above 50%. Now, the Allahabad High Court said that already OBC people are properly represented in municipal bodies in Uttar Pradesh. You did not did this study properly. And therefore, they said that the seats that have been reserved, that particular thing cannot be carried. And that freeze was imposed by the Allahabad High Court. Is it clear or not? Now, the matter reached to Supreme Court. Now, the matter reached to Supreme Court. And Supreme Court had stayed the order. Okay. The Supreme Court had stayed the Allahabad High Court's order. Supreme Court state the Allahabad High Court's direction, that order. Clear? So this is something that has happened. Fine. Guys, I hope that you have understood. Beyond that, you need not to go in this particular article. Is it clear or not? Fine. Because multiple number of times, all these dimensions we have discussed. And if you want to see it in crisp, you can just go. And there is a one minute short video that is there on our channel that is provided. Okay. Other things are just a repetitive content. And then guys, now we come to the mains practice question. Okay. So mains practice question for today. Question reads, the Panchayati Raj institution has completed 30 years of existence. However, a lot remains to be done in order to further decentralize and strengthen de democracy at the grassroots level. Examine. So this is, this is guys, a 10 marker question. Okay. So that is all for today, guys. And if you have any doubt, you may ask your doubts, guys. And meanwhile, a very good morning to Rajeshwari, Bhagyashri, Visin, uh, KMAC, Radhika, Sai Balakrishna, Shumuk Sundari, Ganesh, Anand. Uh, there are a lot of comments by Anand. Anil, Shreya, Anand, Jalaj. Okay. Neha, Shelly, Soni, Anand, Anupam, Vignesh, Sai Prasad, Eliminati, Gaurav, Nath, Pallavi, Netrapal, Kanika, Meenu, Fazil, Gorinath, 
प्रताप संदीप निहारिका हर्षित काजल अंबर दीपू लक्ष्मी नेहा राजा आनंद युक्ता मंजू दिव्या नरसिमन स्नेहा रजनीश इकबाल नितिन धर्मवीर मोहम्मद रफी सिन्हा सिन्हा विपिन लिंक लिंकन राज डी एम मसाली यसु राबड़ी ह्यूमन चॉइस डॉक्टर संतोष साई गणेश अंजलि रमिया उमेश इंस्पायर प्रीति शेरॉन प्रीति किंग राजपथ फजिल अनवी अलोक इप्सा रमस्या नागराज प्रीति साधु रामसिया कीर्ति लक्ष्मी निरंजन विशाल अक्षय अभिषेक एसके पल्लवी निरंजन प्लानक्स डॉक्टर संतोष निरंजन भारत थैंक यू एवरीवन यस 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 संतोष आई विल टेक रेस्ट Yes guys thank you everyone so that is all for today and if you have liked the video please do hit your like button and thanks a lot thanks a lot to all your lovely comments that you leave in the video i am really thankful to you for that thank you so much guys now we'll meet tomorrow